friends. It is Monday again, and I am Anna Lee Dragon, the director of the Kinderhook Memorial Library, and I'm back with another book talk. So I was kind of struggling for what to discuss this week. It's the middle of winter, and it's kind of the doldrums of everything. And um, so I decided that I was just going to talk about some really great books that I love. And a few of these I have mentioned very briefly um, in unboxings. So one at that time, I had not read them yet. And now I have several of them, and I'm super excited to talk about them with you. Um, the funny thing that I was trying to put together a theme, and it seems as though I've picked ones with all main characters who are female that I really like. So that's just, it wasn't intentional. It was just when I pulled the books, this is this is what I found. So uh, that's kind of a happy accident, um, given that we have our first female vice president ever and the breaking of the glass ceiling and all of those things. Um, I thought how cool that I picked a bunch of books with really great female protagonists. So I've got a couple different, there's some historical fiction, there's some mystery, and then there are just some current new ones that have a little magical realism kind of stuff that we know I enjoy. Uh, so hopefully you will enjoy them as well. So I'm going to do the thing we've been doing where I show a cover and then talk about the book. And then at the end, I will show all of the covers again. So you can make sure that you can take notes or see if you are, are interested in borrowing any of them. They are all available in our library system, in the Mid-Hudson library system. And if you need any help putting a hold or picking them up or coming in for an appointment, just let us know. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first book that we're going to discuss is The Clan of the Cave Bear by Jean Owl, A-U-E-L. I, I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I may not be. Um, so these are books that I was introduced to as a high schooler, I think. My mom had suggested them. They're a series, and they are all about a character named Ayla, who is a young girl in the Ice Age, basically. And so it's a caveman, cavewoman story. Um, and as you would expect, there's some pretty brutal parts of it because obviously there were, <laughs> from what we know, there were different interactions between people. It was a very survivalist situation during the Ice Age. There wasn't a lot of time for niceties or comforts. Um, but this series introduces you to Ayla and her kind of experiences growing up during the Ice Age. And she is with the clan of the Cave Bear is the group of people that she is sort of taken in by. And I think these books are fabulous. There is uh, an element of, I guess you would call it romance. I, I think that's maybe stretching the definition of that word. Uh, given the situation, the Ice Age, I don't really think there was a lot of uh, romantic love as we think about it today. But there is a, a partnership that she forms and there is the family dynamics and there is the survival element. And if you're into just historical stuff and interested in that period in history, um, these books are informed by some factual stuff, although they are highly fictionalized. And we obviously can't know exactly how things went because we just don't have documentation that early back about what day-to-day -day life was like. So this is kind of an imagining of what it was like. And I just found them fascinating. And if you like one, then there are more to follow, which is always a good thing. So The Clan of the Cave Bear is the first one in the series. And I think you might like it. So if you are into kind of... Um, I guess, generational kind of epic novels. This is the beginning of one of those in the series. And so you might really like it if you haven't picked it up. They were published a long time ago, so you may already have uh, become familiar with them. But if you haven't, it might be an interesting read for you. Okay, next book. The next book is a more modern book and has nothing really to do with the Clan of the Cave Bear except for that it has a female character protagonist um, whose name, I'm sorry, I'm just looking down to take a uh, look at my notes. Her name is Eva, the, the female protagonist of this book. The book is written by J. Ryan Stradal. Uh, you will you saw the cover and I'll show it again at the end. This one came out, I don't know, five or six years ago. It's not super new, but it was something that I just found really enjoyable about it. Uh, it's not a high pressure, tense kind of story. It is about a Eva whose father and mother got together um, and then her mother disappears. She becomes infatuated with the idea of becoming a sommelier and she leaves when Eva is very young. And so Eva is raised by her father and it's about foodie culture, which I am fully a part of. I, I love going out to a new restaurant, trying different kinds of food. And so Eva becomes a chef and does these great pop-up restaurants all over the Midwest that become a thing. They go kind of viral and 
they're selling out and there's wait lists for them and famous people want to come. And so it's sort of how, and then there is a, a, at the end, a sort of resolution to the situation with her relationship with her mom. Um, so it's about food and family relationships and it's just great fiction. There's not some, I don't know, uh, crime or, you know, if you're looking for something a little more upbeat, a little more comforting, um, I think this book fits the bill and I've recommended it to a number of people because of that. And if you're into foodie culture, I think it will really speak to you. It's a, it's a really neat idea and a really great story. Okay, so we'll get on to our next read. So the next book I wanted to discuss is called Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore and it is by Matthew Sullivan. So this book is a murder mystery, uh, if you are into those kinds of books. And it has a literary twist, which we love uh, as library lovers. So the main character's name is Lydia, and she is a clerk at the Bright Ideas bookstore, as the title would suggest. And somebody who is one of their regulars commits suicide in the bookstore, or so it seems. And so there is this whole mystery around figuring out uh, why and how Lydia was connected to him and uh, what really happened. And it is not a super blood and guts gory kind of murder mystery. So if you're worried about that, don't worry. And it's not police procedural. It's, it's very much character driven and it heavily involves the bookstore and its culture and the people who go there and then this character and there is a really good mystery though and it's just told in a really engaging way so if you've liked other books like i've suggested the storied life of aj fickery which is a different kind of novel but also revolves around kind of book life i think you might really enjoy the midnight at the bright ideas bookstore by matthew sullivan all right i've got two more left to discuss Okay, so we're at our first book that I did in an unboxing a while ago and have since read and fell completely in love with and just wanted to come back and kind of fill you in. I was excited to read it, but then it was even better than I imagined. So the book is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, who has written other books that I really enjoyed. This is a very different one from her other books though. So this is about Addie LaRue, the titular character who is in the 1800s, I believe, or 1700s in France, in the country, that not in the city in Paris. Um, and she's growing up with her family and she is promised for marriage to somebody and she really doesn't want to get married to this person. She doesn't really want to be married at all. But at the time, there really weren't options for women, right? Like this was the way that your life went. And so there is a neighbor of hers who is kind of the local medicine woman, witch woman, who she befriends as a child. And the woman tells her, is often praying to the, what she calls the old gods, which I would say is more like a pagan nature worship kind of situation. And so, you know, Addie sort of approaches her like, well, how do you get them to do what you want? And she, the old woman tells her, you can't, you can ask, but you can never guarantee that they're going to do what you want. And also just as a warning, you should never ask for something from a God that answers after dark because those are, you know, in her view, the ne'er-do-well of the nature gods. And so Addie, in a desperate measure to kind of uh, change her fate, ends up doing one of these spells, being outside and praying very hard to the old gods about not, about being free is basically her, her wish. And what happens is right as she's finishing her, her praying, the sun goes down and she doesn't realize it. And so a god answers, but it's one of the ones who answers after dark. And so you have to be very careful how you phrase your wishes and your hopes. And I think that's a lesson we've heard in a number of stories. Um, and Addie then begins this life where she is free in many senses, um, but not at all in the way that she had imagined. And I don't wanna give away too much of the story because it's really original and really cool. Um, it does span the ages. So we watch Addie over centuries because that freedom is not limited to a single human normal lifetime. Um, and you get to see, I mean, I love anything that involves France. She does go to Paris, she travels the world, she ends up in New York City. It comes through to modern times. It kind of goes back and forth the narrative between the beginning of the story and where she is currently. And so there's a lot of flashing back and forward. It has an excellent resolution. It was a it was a great original novel, which is not something I can say about many books. A lot of books share one of our traditional human stories. And this book is different, which I loved. 
and it just it involves all things I love, um, France and travel and some sort of magic. Um, and it does involve suspending disbelief, but it is excellently written and I just loved, I lived in it for a few days and I would love to be back in that world. So if you haven't checked out the, the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, I highly recommend now. Okay, and one more book. The last book I wanted to touch on today is another one that I mentioned in an unboxing and I was excited to read, but have since picked up and I am still, I'm not quite done with it. I'm still currently reading this one, but I gotta share it because when we're talking about strong female heroine characters, uh, this book has several of them. So it's called The Once and Future Witches and it is by Alex E. Harrow. And it does take place, there is a, an element of history in it, but it also is some magic in it too. So it is about a family of three sisters who have a very rough childhood um, with a, an abusive father and you kind of meet them in situ so they're adults now and so there's a lot of flashing back but it is in the late 1800s and so and they live in New Salem and so it is about the kind of this all starts around the movement for suffrage for women getting the right to vote they're starting to be a push for that in their community P women are protesting and asking for these rights and tied into that and kind of parallel is the idea of women's power. And so one of the sisters especially is very uh, set on the idea of bringing witching back. She knows that they had witches in their family who were powerful. And another sister is a librarian who believes firmly that some of the witching power and the words and the spells have not disappeared. They have been buried in uh, fairy tales and nursery rhymes and kind of hidden in plain sight, which is something that has happened in history. When we saw during times of slavery, we saw hymns and things being imbued with messages so that slaves could communicate to one another when they weren't being allowed to. And so they sort of subverted the system, which is a similar idea here. It's that the nursery rhymes actually have um, spells in them essentially. And so it becomes this great story and all, not all the sisters agree on how to approach this or even if they think that witching should come back, but they they do agree on the idea of women should be have a voice and gain power and be allowed the vote. And it's very tied to the idea of why people were afraid of what they called witches, which is essentially that they had power and that was not okay at the time. So I thought it was this really great combination of sort of a real world thing that happened in suffrage, the suffrage movement, and also some magic um, in the idea of witchcraft, which is really usually just a lot of knowledge about things, whether it's herbal remedies or um, other things, or folk tales sort of stuff. And I, it's just really well written. It's, you sucks you right in and it's all about women power, which I always wanna read about. So I think you might really enjoy The Once and Future Witches. I know I am loving it. Okay, so that's all I have for today. I'm going to put the covers of all of the books at the end here so you can see them. Feel free to request them. Uh, if you want, if you've read some of these and you're looking for something even different, another female character that you wanna read about or something along those lines, feel free to email me or give us a call and I'll be happy to make some recommendations. And I will see you all next week. If not before then, uh, feel free to stop by for curbside service or to come in and make an appointment. We hope you are all doing well. And if you are in need of tax forms, we do not have them physically here yet, but the federal forms are online. So I am we are happy to print them for you free of charge. Um, and the state forms are not yet online, but they will be. So if you need tax forms, give us a call, let us know, and we're happy to help. Okay, I'll see you all next week. Have a lovely week.